All right. I thought I'd try to analyze a bit. Just some four player chess. And hang with me because <laughs> I d this is just some ideas. Let's just start with the most basic opening. Like, like why do you start with h2, h3? I mean, first you can look at the coordinate system. It's really hard to use them well from all colors because you're rotating the board 45. 90 degrees every time you play but why this move first of all it opens up the queen and also the bishop it's like in regular chess you might play h4 like it will be e4 or g g g4 which would be d4 and then f4 which would be c4 and similarly you can also start with knight like knight i3 knight i3 which would be knight f3 and in that regard four player chess is very similar to regular chess but in in some sense we don't really in one sense maybe h4 is the best move who knows because then you can develop the light squared bishop in some cases the problem with h4 is that it weakens the position as well like sometimes it can be overextended and the weak king is worth even more in four player chess Consec Consecutive checks almost means that the game is over. Sometimes I think h4 may be just as good, maybe even better. But if you play h4, often the idea is that you play a normal variation and then you trade queens. When the double pawn push is advantageous because in the ending it will be easier to activate your pieces with more space so let's just start with some basics like what if they try to counter you with the most like I want to trade everything I copy you yellow keeps copying and now if green also copies then Red should trade queens. Green should trade queens. And then in the end, <laughs> we are left with some. Um, uh, note that if bishop, bishop b, um, bishop b8, then yellow can just grab the bishop because I grab his bishop next turn. So let's see like this. Then you just trade queens. And the problem here is that if he grabs my bishop, then he grabs the queen. And after the next turn, then he will grab his the bishop of green, which would end up with an extra piece. One interesting variation is if green plays the kind of intelligent move uh, L5 attacking the um, knight pawn of red because then the same trick isn't as effective bishop takes and now king takes runs into mate so blue should trade queens take 
And now if this move, then there's a nice shot there, which is bishop back. <laughs> Looks weird, but it, I think it's the best move. So let's say he continues with some random move. Then yellow plays this bishop move. And let's say it takes with the queen. Now one interesting way to play is that um okay red first. So red should probably grab the queen. Now if um blue grabs <laughs> grabs a pawn probably yellow should um, try to counter on green as well let's say I take with the knight I take the bishop and now winning this rook in the corner doesn't really help <laughs> because yellow will have uh, first it's blue, so let's say yellow grabs here, now he can grab the rook, but the next turn he grabs the bishop and I grab his rook, so let's say he grabs, I take back, and let's say some knight, knight out. Um, Let's just say knight out here as well. Now he takes my rook, I take his rook. <laughs> and finally, I have everything except the rook. Yellow has lost two pieces, blue has lost two pieces, and uh, green has an, a bishop less. So in total we want a piece by that sequence. It can get messy but that's probably the refutation. This bishop move because then we win the bishop back. <laughs> And let's say blue played something else like knight here. Still bishop takes, and it's the same trick because grabbing the rook he loses the queen. Yeah, so that's the first trick everyone should know. Now let's go back to let's. In, to begin with, I will just go over this h3 opening move. Then I will cover all the responses. And note that pushing twice doesn't change anything in this regard. A more interesting way to play would be to play the knight's opening. And now it's a little bit more difficult to play. One way say you play king pawn for yellow and yellow and red and then there's not quite some nice and nice ideas here. Right. Uh, probably. I yeah, probably should play it the other way. Like a Sicilian opening, and then if king pawn, then you play 
a night's opening. <laughs> and I played... I just confused the move order, sorry about that. So the idea is that, say... Let's just say red plays a normal move. Then blue can play this queen move. And it has a very specific idea. So let's say let's say yellow just plays a normal queen development. And then green plays this kind of weird move. Offering a bishop exchange. So it's kind of a delayed idea. Now the rook defends the bishop. Now I've had many nice wins with this. <laughs> and this queen is perfectly placed because if red now tries queen um, queen k5 then the queen is there to cover so that's not available and you can get checkmated so fast here. Probably the knight is a good try, but um, I'm not saying it's really great or anything, but um, you can really get into a lot of trouble here. had this like you offer the queen exchange <laughs> and then green is really in time to trade so if you don't trade then what do you do and the point is that if you trade and I um, let's say takes probably some queen out is advisable but it, this is just a, an equalizing try like you try to trade everything off so if yellow is uh, more more aware of what's going on, maybe he will play this queen d queen d10 with idea to attack uh, attack blue. More, maybe this is more critical, but it's not set in stone that green will play this move. And that's what's nice about this knight's opening. Maybe suddenly you play like oh, okay now I'll, now I will play the C Sicilian, a delayed version. And now while you kind of trick them into playing a different move order, and some of these tricks are hard to assess. Maybe a move you will face more is um, d3, uh, e3. But lately, this e pawn push is not the main move. It's not bad by any means. Playing this kind of setup is really solid, and you can play it as both colors and pretty much be okay. But if you play it as green and blue, then you have could get knocked out really fast. But if you're prepared to like sack a piece or something, you can get really nice compensation. Like in the night opening, sometimes you just you just have to sack it, sack this piece. Like if k4 k5 attack the knight 
in the meantime maybe you can drum up something with your queen and if they take usually the king feels really safe so if you can get in an attack it can be worth it a really tricky idea is to play the c pawn in response so now you're really isolating green because either pawn move will result in a queen trade and actually a mating so you pretty much force a secondary move on green but on the other hand you give blue a little bit of a freer hand this can get really sharp um, I like the, playing the knight here, but the uh, developing pawn is also good. Probably here, I would say you should play the queen just one step. If you play two, then you give yellow the opportunity to play one, and if red then attacks your queen, you're really short on squares. Because if you move anywhere on the diagonal, maybe queen b6 and queen on the square you went to will be a pseudo sacrifice. And probably here, let's say either you can play the standard Sicilian Khan type of idea or the knight first. Now after the knight, the trickiest move is probably bishop l8, l7, and red should play queen k5. <laughs> queen k5 because if if you allow queen um, queen f9, uh, queen f10, sorry, then there's a double attack on yellow. Now I actually allowed it by accident. Let's say queen, queen and uh, queen j4, and now this really annoying move. <laughs> I mean, you can still play. Uh, there's probably a save here with knight, knight there, knight there. But it's not very comfortable. <laughs> so let's say you play the queen. And now, what was the idea? Maybe this move. That would be tricky. I guess they can play here. And then sacrifice. Maybe that's annoying. Yeah, that looks problematic. So let's say you play the knight first then. Or something like that. Yeah, still what about this move? And then sacrifice. Oh yeah, right. That doesn't really work because now yellow can develop the queen. And if there's a capture you just take back 
and the idea is that if queen queen g2 check then there's um, queen k10 pinning the queen with one I had this game like uh, they attack the knight now you really have to be sharp there's no way around it so I play this double pawn push that's really really risky probably losing I wasn't sure about this uh, this move oh yeah it, the game didn't go like this in this position I realized my mistake uh, Yeah, the game was a little bit different, it went like this, e3, queen b6, knight i10, uh, knight i12, knight i12, Bishop L L seven It's L seven, right? Yeah. Bishop L seven and now the bishop development. Bishop E two Queen F ten. Knight d12 Queen m8 And now <laughs> I'm not I'm not totally sure if it's possible to grab this no ah then the queen protects the first yeah so here the point was queen queen h2 <laughs> which is absolutely ludicrous then he attacked the knight I attack the queen. Now there was some interesting variation, like <laughs> you can already think about sacrificing here. Take. Maybe this is losing by force. Maybe not. Yeah, possibly, possibly this Queen F four defense. Queen there though. Queen Queen G eleven. King takes Queen L seven check. I don't think they have a mate there. 
like um, but the variation is not over let's see yeah there's there's also this tricky move queen takes knight <laughs> Yeah, I thought that last variation it didn't quite work. Queen takes knight is really, really interesting. So after queen takes pawn, now blue is faced with a mating threat. But let's say it doesn't care about that. Like check. Yeah, then you can offer the offer the queen trade. And then you basically win a queen. You can cover with the queen on queen on c six, but then that just gets traded off, and the blue queens are the blue queen is overloaded. This is a really um, regular occurrence of a tactic, like the queen being overloaded. So if you find Let's just go to the beginning because I thought I think I exhausted that variation a little bit. If you find your queen like unprotected in the middle of the board, any any square that one of the players can attack this queen, this will mean that the other player on that team can get a free move. Let's just look at the king pawn opening again. So one trick is to play the L9 with the idea that if we try to isolate the the blue blue queen like with uh, D4. Four, queen b6, bishop h12, then there's a nice little queen takes i13. <laughs> it seems paradoxical that it should work, but it's a mating, mating attack. Yellow can still block the green, uh, green key, queen out, so it's not totally clear that it's a good idea. And here there's queen takes size 13. The idea is that after queen i3, you just trade the trade the queens. Doesn't work. Seems my Oops. Lo loading a little bit slowly. So you grab the bishop, <laughs> and then there's a uh, mating on the back row. 
Some of these ideas are really beautiful. I wonder, is there a... Yeah, it should... It should work out. Yeah. It does. I found found a very interesting way to sidestep this. Let's just first finish this variation. If we can. Probably I overloaded the game notation. Mated on the move. Or you can lose a queen. <laughs> the point is that if queen queen i queen i eleven, then blue grabs the yellow queen and. Green grabs the red queen, <laughs> and then they're just down a lot of material. And any, um, if you block the other way, then it's the same. And if you try this queen check, then queen down is checkmate. <laughs> so there, there's no defense. There are a number of ways to kind of trick your opponents here. Like if you play bishop g3 here, that stops that plan, but then the blue queen can develop to any other square and just work around it. Let's just reset the notation because it seems like it's lagging a bit. So, Sicilian. And now, probably my favorite way to answer this is to push the pawn twice. <laughs> now, the idea is that if you make the queen move farther out, then you have prepared to play bishop out, and then there's a check on blue. And if you try the same thing, Trade the queen, and you want to checkmate, and there's a check. And now it's actually green who gets checkmated. Check, and checkmate. <laughs> that was... Kind of a nice counter trick if you want, if you like. And if not this move, then let's say green just plays a random move like in here. Now, if red could try this bishop move and then check. Yeah, so red really has to play this move almost regardless of what is played. And now you kind of isolate this queen. Mm. 
Like you moved the queen anywhere here then. There's no pawn push because the pawn is pinned. And if you move the queen out then it's going to get hit again. Like with knight and queen going out. You should be careful though because green has the active queen most likely. But that can also backfire. Like if yellow pushes the pawn, red attacks the, the queen. And if the queen takes then there's a mating on green. So this is really interesting. Therefore sometimes players will still play these two squares just to just to gain some more space allowing the knight to develop. Probably the main opening for some time was is and was this uh, Queen spawn defense. I kind of think that two pawns, two squares is also very interesting. And then just develop the queen and pieces. It, you can get stuck there because the knight doesn't really have a square. When you play one square, then the knight is, has a knight, nice anchor square on, on d9. I mean D8. Probably one variation that I think I was the first active player using was this is probably the mainline Sicilian I mean there are some players don't like it but it's still kind of a mainline now if the normal move was to play the blocker to answer bishop bishop g12 with um, L, l9 L8, sorry. But I like to play L8 immediately. Now let's say you play... Um, yeah, one important point is that Queen K5 I don't think works. Because there's Queen takes F2. Now then, normally you would play bishop takes bishop takes b7, but then queen plays this bishop takes h3, and then red really feels like something is going wrong here. Uh, stick point here. Uh, one moment. Yeah, like um, maybe one square is more accurate. Okay, let's go over this again. Yeah, and the the idea is that yellow will um, now you play this one. Queen attacks the queen takes back and now after check to force the win of the queen then you could either block with the queen now you really have to grab the queen <laughs> ah, actually you may not have to at this point yeah you do okay you grab the queen but then um, 
it's not so easy anymore. <laughs> you can move this bishop pretty much anywhere. But there is even something to be said for this. Sacrifice. No, maybe... Queen f5 is coming. Yeah, this is probably not the best. But after this check, you can also just retreat. I've had a n number of games here, and the Red King is really insecure. So that's the, one of the points. It's kind of an anti-bishop bishop development move as well. So usually red should probably play e3. Now what I like is this waiting move, kind of, knight c6. And now the normal move is probably to check with the queen. Now you have to block with the pawn, because if you block with the piece and the first rank, second rank, then queen takes pawn and yellow mates next move. But here is no, there's no mating. Probably queen k5. First develop the knights. Just to cover the base. Now, there are a number of tries here, I kind of like this, um, yeah, let's, let's say just knight development, for now. You can play two squares, and just attack red, which I think is a very interesting idea. And you can also play the knight knight out first, just to be flexible <sighs> and let's just say red keeps playing safe as well if you're not careful then you may get hit here if the bishop is loose and if you're not careful um, You can just get this bishop attack, kind of, this idea illustrates the back, the problem with this early queen development, but there is a way, like, you can sack your queen here, and probably green has to give up some material. Maybe not. Yeah, now I can just grab, of course. That was weird. Yeah, it's not easy, this one. Bishop takes. Queen takes. Yeah, because... <laughs> um, let's see. Rook takes. Now, taking this rook is kind of a bad idea, because <laughs> now, now you will, will get mated, because this check, then there's a blocker, and then the bishop's connection is removed. So probably the normal move is just to close the diagonal. And now a critical So let's see, yeah, queen out, 
Now, if Bishop takes, that's probably a bad idea. You just take it. Actually, you can play this move as well. But I like this. It's kind of discouraging this move because after bishop takes, let's say any queen move, I don't know. Let's say you attack the queen just for fun. Now after this entry, queen takes. And then, can you play this move? Not sure. That's really risky. Maybe you can play this. Like if you block here? Whoa. A little bit of a. Uh, Run the move there. Yeah, this can get really, really sharp. I mean, yellow still has to counter check on green, so it's not super clear. Like now, red will check and the king has to run. <laughs> it's a mess. So that's one idea with this this move order. You allow the check, but it's not fatal at all. Yeah, so that's a short introduction, and probably I will cover it more in depth later. But for now, have a good night.